Are you sick and tired of being sick and tired? It's been said that an apple a day keeps the doctor away, or does it? I was feeling so bad. I asked my family doctor just what I had. It's time to get a new prescription for your life. Get ready for your daily dose of Healthy Talk Radio, the show that's empowering your health. And now, here's America's health and lifestyle coach. Show where your health is your wealth. Thriving is more important than just surviving, and the only thing lost are those unwanted pounds. This is Healthy Talk Radio, talk radio that helps you get well, stay well, and live well. Phone lines are open, 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. What are you struggling with? Let's talk about it, your health and your life. Remember, if the body can get sick, it can also get well. It's about lifestyle, about the choices we make every single day that determine the kind of health we're going to have. We want to encourage you, equip you, and take you to the next level for your health and for your life. Quitting smoking, of course, we all know that quitting smoking is a big deal. We've been ranting and raving about that in medical practice and most healthcare practitioners for years. But qu- quitting smoking now, they're saying, is linked to better mental health. So not just about your heart and your lungs, cholesterol levels and cancer, but now mental health is a big deal. They're saying it's good for mental health, physical health as well. 4,800 daily smokers were looked at in the United States, and they did a couple of different surveys. Those who had an addiction or other mental health issues were looked at. And then the first survey looked at about 40% of participants had better mood or had mood and anxiety disorders. 50% had alcohol issues and 24% had drug issues. So the second survey showed that 29% of those who'd quit smoking had mood disorders compared to about 42% of those who still smoked. The study findings were released online in the Journal of Psychological Medicine, which when it looked at treating these disorders, doctors overlooked their patients in this, some looking at their psychological or psychiatric, uh, psychiatric issues. At Washington University School of Medicine in St. Louis, they noticed in the news release that clinicians tend to treat depression, uh, alcohol dependence, and drug issues first. Lead investigator Patricia uh, Reg, who's an assistant professor of psychiatry, said that the assumption is that psychiatric problems are more challenging to treat than quitting smoking, which may interfere with the treatment. However, these findings suggest a strong link between quitting smoking and improved mental health, while researchers have found an association between the two. The study did not prove a cause and effect relationship. They always say that. But they said we really need to spread the word and encourage doctors and patients to tackle these issues. When a patient is ready to focus on other mental health issues, it may be an ideal time to address smoking cessation as well. Smoking cessation is a big deal, and that's something that we have to look at on a regular basis to really create a type of situation that you want to you want to encourage someone to really begin to live better, to feel better, to deal with better. It's a major, major issue. Smoking is a big key. We know that. But there's great natural methods now to be able to cut out the smoking that people can really, really do well with, especially cutting out uh, certain nutrients in the in the diet. I mean, for example, getting your dopamine levels up when you uh, when you are, are working on quitting smoking will help because one of the major things that nicotine does in the body is it it really latches onto those dopamine receptors that's our feel good neurotransmitter or brain chemical and once those have been affected that's when it becomes a little bit challenging so that's one thing we have to look at in a great way is replacing and supporting nutrition in the body which can be an overall help and help tremendously along the way. Thomas in Atlanta, Georgia, he says, I have recurring warts on my thumbs. Is there a way to get rid of them? Well, with warts, remember, it's the human papillomavirus. That's the theory, and that's the, the current understanding in medicine. So with warts, they don't just randomly appear. There's a virus going on in the body that becomes active. And re- getting, the, body, getting this, the, the immune system to drop it down and to, to, to be able to fight against that makes a big difference. So getting the human papillomavirus to be more on the dormant side is one of the main issues you have to look at. So I would encourage you to look at that. Now, one of the big keys, you can have them frozen. You can use salicylic acid. There's a lot of different standard treatments that can be used for those that can be quite helpful. That's one thing. But I would look across the board to see exactly what can be done from a natural perspective. And if you want to go to the medical doctor, your dermatologist, 
and have them take a look at it. They can do what we call freezing it off. It's cryotherapy, but it really gets in and, and just really helps the tissue. It's a quick way of getting it done. But again, the root cause comes from that virus. Cutting down the viral load in the body and getting it to go dormant is one of the best ways to deal with that. 888-283-7272. If you're looking for a lifestyle provider, someone in your area that believes the same way we do, all this nutrition and lifestyle-based care that we talk about, go to the website. You can find out great information there for people to empower you with your health and with your life. It's a big, big tool and a big key to be able to help you along the way. So many times we get stuck and we get to a place where we really can't begin to lose weight, feel better, and get our health back. And sometimes you just need someone to help you and take you by the hand. Well, that's pretty much what we do and how we can help you begin to thrive and begin to make it. You don't have to be stuck where you are. You really can begin to go to that next level. And it all starts with one step. That's it. It takes one step for you to be able to do that and we'll take you into that next place where you can begin to thrive. 888-283-7272. That's 888-283-7272. Lines are open with questions about your health. You can give us a call or go to the website, go to the phones and talk to Stan. Hi, Stan. Yes, um, I'm concerned about, like, sunlight, uh, the controversy today about, you know, you get too much, you're going to get melanoma and all, but then there's other diseases that are caused by uh, vitamin D deficiency. So what is the balance? How much sun is good? That's my question. Well, sunlight, the, 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 the typical thought with sunlight, yes, the answer to your question, bottom line, sun is good. Sun is great for our health. I mean, it raises vitamin D levels. After the age of 50, we really don't have the absorption level of vitamin D that we get from the sun. It, it gets cut in about 50%. So if you just remember 50-50, about the age of 50, then it'll really start uh, beginning to to decline. That's why vitamin D supplementation really does make a difference. And getting about 10 to 20 minutes a day of natural sunlight is beneficial to the skin. It's not going to cause a lot of the cancers that we we are concerned about, melanoma, that sort of thing. That's actually a healthy amount. But being out in the sun an hour a day without protection and sunscreen, yeah, that becomes a challenge. That's when you really have to be a cautious and you've got to be you've got to really guard that, especially if you're fair complected. So using the, the sunscreens that are, are chemical free and, and actually have a lot of the natural ingredients in them are probably one of your best bets and your best way to go simply because you want to, to make sure your body is getting what it needs as natural as possible and getting it from a reliable source. N- nutrition, don't forget, that's the main piece. So when you're looking at getting nutrition, vitamin D, omega-3 fatty acids, any of the main nutrients, that all is going to come from your food. But natural sunlight provides uh, all kinds of benefits from vitamin D, but also it just provides an incredible mood lifter. It raises serotonin levels in the brain, allows us to have a better outlook on life. That's why people live and they move and they're drawn to sunnier climates like Florida and Arizona, California, Denver, Colorado, where it's I think the sun shines like 300 days a year. I mean, amazing. Your mood changes when you're in in climates and environments that are like that. You really can begin to thrive and do well. 888-283-7272. Lines are open. Give us a call or go to the website. We're here for you every single day to be able to thrive and go to the next level in your health and with your life. Coming up, don't go anywhere. I've got some great tips you don't want to miss that can empower your health and empower your life. It's all about lifestyle. To find out more, connect with On Call Radio online at InShapeNetwork.com. What are you struggling with? Let's talk about it. 
health and your life. Remember, if the body can get sick, it can also get well. It's not lifestyle. It's about the choices we make every single day. The choices we make every single day, guess what? They'll determine the kind of health we're going to have tomorrow. It's that simple easy enough. Now, if you're looking to lose weight, feel better, have more energy, our new lifestyle system is available at the website. Call the number 888-283-7272 or go to the website. You can find out more information about it. So if you want to feel better and you don't really know where to start, you need someone to pretty much take you by the hand and, and start from square one. It's okay. If that's where you are, it's all right. It's better to know that you need help and know that you need to go from where you are to where you need to be. That is the starting point. Because remember, health is a journey. It's not something that happens overnight. It's something that we strive for every single day to make better choices so we can live better and we can thrive. That is the absolute key. Let's go to the phones and talk with Joyce. Hi, Joyce. I was diagnosed with Hashimoto's syndrome. I'm not sure what that is. I know it's related to the thyroid gland, but I want to know how does this affect weight gain and blood pressure? Hashimoto syndrome. Thank you. Yeah, it's it's it, you're welcome. It's the the reality is Hashimoto's thyroiditis is what it's called, and it's an autoimmune condition of the thyroid. That's what it is. So when with autoimmune, remember the body attacks itself. The immune system begins to attack the body. It thinks that something's wrong with the thyroid, so it, it goes in and starts attacking the thyroid, causing it to have dysfunction, as we call it. That's when the challenges really occur. And what in medical science, what we're doing now is we're looking at it as, well, you've got a couple of options. If it turns hyper, which means it runs really, really fast, then there's medications you can use. If that doesn't work, then sometimes they'll end up uh, doing radioactive iodine will it, with it, which is what they say. It kind of kills it, destroys the gland, and they remove it or they leave it in. So that's one of the options, which is really, you know, again, it's you got to do your research on what you want to do. And then there's another option that you look at with it when it goes hypo, which means it runs low. And then with Hashimoto's, it can swing back and forth. But if it goes really low, then you got to use medication like uh, Synthroid, Levothyroxine. You can use Armor, uh, Westroid. There's a lot of different versions of that you can use depending on what the physician's uh, will will lead toward you, but I mean it just depends on what your doctor wants to do. But there's natural ways to support this. It's not you're not just left on your own to go down a medical route. Remember, there's a lot of great foods you can use to support healthy thyroid function. A lot of that is in uh, a thyroid piece that we've done on the website that will really give you some some help. But with overall thyroid function like Hashimoto's or even just simply hypothyroidism. There's some there's certain foods you want to stay away from, like, for example, just some of these. There's a lot of them, but a short list would be Brussels sprouts and a lot of the cruciferous vegetables, cabbage, anything in that family, broccoli, cauliflower, and then certain fruits like strawberries can tend to slow the thyroid function down. You want to stay away from those. Be careful. And, you know, it's not just never eat them. Obviously, there's great health benefits in those. It's just you don't want to eat those every single day. Make that a top priority in your foods constantly because it can affect the, the thyroid function at some level. So again, it's the medications managed. That's what they do. And if your doctors put you on medications, it's, it's great and it's fine. No worries on that. But you also want to make sure that you're getting everything that you need and that you're using the key elements that we know that'll make thyroid and other systems work at its top level. That is an absolute key. Triple eight two eight three seven two seven two. That's triple eight two eight three seventy two seventy two. Give us a call. You're listening to On Call Radio. Check us out. Talking about thyroid and those conditions, iodine is the number one trace mineral that we see with with any type of thyroid condition. And Broda Barnes and Guy Abraham, there's just been some great research by endocrinologists over the years on iodine and how the thyroid really does function well on it. And when we're deficient in iodine, what it can actually do, it can really decline these areas of the body and cause there some, to be some challenges associated with that. So that's really what has to be done and looked at overall. When you look at different areas of the body, you want to make sure that you're building up and, and keeping everything where it needs to be. Like, for example, if, you're, if you look at iodine, and what it does is a trace mineral to the thyroid. You can also look at 
uh, tyrosine because tyrosine is, an, is a powerful amino acid, L-tyrosine, that can help these areas build up and, and do very, very well. 888 Give us a call or go to the website. Let's go to Nancy. Hi, Nancy. I am being diagnosed that I have a mass on my ovary, and they they ordered an MRI. But I'm thinking if they're trying to check if it's malignant or whatever, I guess I, I don't want to go through this... Uh, Die that they're gonna insert you so they can see better and it's it's a lot of pain. So I was thinking I was just gonna go ahead and get it removed. I would like to ask my okay. doctor to repair me to a surgeon to get it removed. So I, what's your take about it? I, I I need your advice or opinion about it. Well, it's a really good question. It just depends, and that's kind of a vague answer, but. With the mass on the ovary, if they if they've really determined that it's it's dangerous, and I mean in medicine there's certain measurements with with these sorts of things and statistics that they have to go by. There's other tests that can be done. You can talk to them about where they can look at it a little bit more in detail. The the general knee jerk rule of thumb is to remove it just to be safe, right? To be on the safe side. Sometimes the mass though is not cancerous. And it's a small little tumor that's completely benign, and it could stay there. So I think you just have to look at some of the testing ability to see if it's really kind of a moot point and it, it's not worth pursuing. I would look at it from that perspective on what to do because at the end of the day, you want to build the body up as strong as it can, but you don't want to make unwise choices either. So removal is it, – it's a surgery and it's a big deal – but you've got to get their opinion and go as detailed as you can on the testing. This content is brought to you by our good friends at Liberty HealthShare, the absolute best alternative to traditional health insurance. Visit Liberty HealthShare at libertyhealthshare.org. To find out more, visit the show online, InShapeNetwork.com. Because the choices we make today can and will determine the kind of health we're going to have tomorrow. And we always talk about staying away from sugar. And, of course, we know sodas are bad. You don't want to drink a bunch of sodas. You want to stay away from the high fructose corn syrup. And you definitely want to stay away from the artificial sweeteners for the most part. Some of them are okay. Truvia, actually really good for you. Uh, Stevia extract, really, really good. But the sugary drinks obviously can be hard on us. And that includes fruit juices, by the way. A lot of people think, well, I'm drinking my fruit juice. It's got to be healthy. Please, for the love of, of everything that there is, stop giving your kids juice in their sippy cups. Please, I'm begging you. And Juicy Juice, not to be knocking on the brand, but is, is just it's a bunch of sugar. And all you're doing is increasing the chances of so many health challenges from obesity, diabetes, you're dealing with inf chronic inflammation uh, diseases. I mean, cut the sugar out. They're saying that drinking sugar-sweetened beverages every day raises men's risk of heart disease. And the research has analyzed data from about 43,000 men in the health professional's follow-up study and found that those who drank one 12-ounce sugar-sweetened beverage a day had a 20% higher risk of heart disease in those who didn't drink any sugar-sweetened beverages. They also found the consumption of sugar-sweetened beverages was linked to inflammation, imagine that, and higher levels of harmful fats in the blood. That's the whole deal with triglycerides. You know, triglycerides, when they get elevated, it means that you're not only getting fat in your diet, that or, or the kind of fat, like saturated fat, that you don't really need, but also it's binding together, and the body's having a hard time breaking down sugars. So they combine together and make your triglycerides go through the roof. So there's obesity and diabetes epidemics, which ultimately will lead to increase in cardiovascular deaths in the United States in years to come. 
who Kevin Marza, who's a chief of cardiology at Winthrop University in Mineola, New York, obesity rates have increased in tandem with consumption of sugar-loaded drinks. The time for research should be over, they said, but the American Heart Association has already given recommendations for not consuming more than 450 calories from sweetened drinks per week. That's less than three cans of soda. How about just cut it out? That's not, I mean, to cut out your risk by 20%, I don't know, sign me up for that one. That's not a real tough one to figure out. The men in the study, mostly white and from age 40 to 75, were questioned about their health and eating habits over two years from 1986 to 2008. They also provided a blood sample halfway through the study period. Artificially sweetened beverages did not increase the risk of heart attack, nor did less frequent consumption twice weekly or twice monthly. So this was all published here recently. It's interesting, though, just by making some of these little changes, by cutting out sugary drinks, by making some simple lifestyle changes, imagine the kind of traction that you can get in your own health and with your own life. Quote for the day comes from Rita Mae Brown. It says, one of the keys to happiness is a bad memory. Now that, as we say, can preach right there. Because if you think about it, if you ever met so many people, and I know, ladies, that you have a memory like an elephant. Not that you look like an elephant, but that you have a memory like an elephant. So I get that. We get that. Actually, we get that. Okay? And you don't forget anything. But have you ever met people that just, men or women, that just hold on to the grudges and you, you, you cross somebody, you do someone wrong, and people just hold on to it and hold on to it and hold on to it. And they remember every detail. 20 years goes by and they remember every detail. It's like, let it go. You want to be happy. You want to be healthy. You want to live free of disease. One of the big keys in doing that is having a bad memory. And it's forgiving. That's what that is all about. It's about forgiveness. How about cranking up your forgiveness meter with everyone in your life? And watch what will happen. Watch the increase that will happen in your life. And watch how you'll notice the change of those around you. It's incredible. And it increases, I mean, the the happiness that increases is really amazing for your own life. Because when you don't forgive people, you only put yourself in a prison and you put yourself in chains. 888-283-7272. Lines are open. You can also go online. Shoot me an email. Let's go to Elvis now. Elvis, you're in the building. Welcome. Having me on your show, absolutely. Um, I'm a fairly new listener to your show. I, I catch it when I can on my way home from work. And I, first of all, I want to tell you it's a great show. I love it. Thank you. Thank you. Um, my question was about uh, thyroid problems. Uh, I recently, recently being within the last year, found out that my thyroid had shut down, and my level, uh, my TSH levels were so alarmingly high that my doctor actually called in or other uh, physician of the office to verify that she was seeing, you know, that it was possibly or could be that high. It was 140, 142 or 147. That's when really high. Yeah, so I think the normal range was 0.4 to 1 point something. Yeah, did they retest it and uh, confirm it? Well, I, I don't have insurance. Uh, we did what testing we could, and she, I, I had enough testing to get – I'm on 75 micros, micrograms of uh, Synthroid. Uh, at the moment, I've got to go have some more testing done. I've uh, changed jobs to where I can get insurance, and that's getting ready to kick in. But I was just looking for some other changes that I can do that maybe could help my thyroid, or I don't even know if it's still if, – if I could ever bring it back to make it work. Oh, yeah, you can bring it back. Okay, I, I wasn't sure, but with it being that high, she was like, you know, it's totally shut down. And if I remember correct, she said that, you know, you, you will have to be on this medicine for the rest of your life. So I, I don't buy into that. <laughs> yeah, well, how old are you? What is your age? Uh, I'm 36, uh, 37. Yeah, the thyroid gland's interesting. I, wouldn't, I definitely wouldn't give up. I mean, if they haven't removed the glands, as long as you have the gland in your body, it has the potential to function well again. A lot of times... With the thyroid gland, you have to look at iodine levels. Iodine is the number one trace mineral that causes the thyroid to work well. And if we get deficient in iodine, a lot of times the thyroid won't work. And 
Broda Barnes wrote an interesting book on the thyroid. He's a famous endocrinologist. You might want to look that up on Amazon, but just look up Broda Barnes. And yeah, I would look up and do some of the reading that was written on the thyroid and iodine. It's interesting. You can do a test. They have a, an iodine clearance test your physician can run. Check and see what your iodine levels are. You may end up needing some of that. It just depends. That's always a big key is iodine. The other thing, though, if you do have low thyroid, a couple things to think about in your diet. Number one, stay away from the cruciferous vegetables. They'll slow your thyroid down. So you got cauliflower, broccoli, Brussels sprouts, that whole family will slow it down. Coconut oil is known to be helpful in speeding it up. You can take that however. You can cook with it. It's a great cooking oil, about the best there is next to grapeseed oil. So those two are, are really good. But tyrosine plays a big role. It's a key factor in any type of thyroid condition. So tyrosine is a simple amino acid, and you might want to do some research on that. Two, if they ha- I know you don't have insurance, so the, the blood testing and all that can be kind of expensive. I would have them do what's called a thyroid peroxidase test to see if it's gone into Hashimoto's and to see if there's any type of autoimmune disease going on. It might be a little expensive, but it'd be worth it. And also, they can check your anterior pituitary gland, which is checking the HGH levels in the body, and that's another two, and that's another one too, because they can really see if if the anterior pituitary is, is pituitary is kind of a primary to the overall thyroid. A lot of times, we go right after the thyroid because it's slow or whatever's going on, and we don't look at the pituitary gland to see if it was more of a root cause of the situation. So. That's another one to look into as well. But I wouldn't lose hope. I definitely would not. And your diet makes a key role in this. you got to look at your lifestyle factors. There are some genetics, but a lot of times it's deficiencies. And I wouldn't let that go. I would, I would do some more research on it, okay? 888 Lines are open. Questions about your health. Our preferred wellness providers, health care providers in your area that believe this lifestyle and nutrition-based care. And we are growing. The network is growing all over the country. It's exciting to see. So just want to keep you aware that if you've been looking, there are great physicians in your area that believe in the stuff that I'm talking about. Sarah, you're next on the line. How can I help? Hey, thank you for taking my call. Um, I am a longtime listener, and I'm just beginning to get frustrated. I am here in Nashville, Tennessee, and my hair is falling out. Oh, my uh, goodness. Yeah, my hair is falling out. I'm 33 year old, 33 year old white woman. Are you my still a spring chicken? Out. What was that? So you're still a spring chicken, my goodness. Yeah, I know, right? <laughs> right. <laughs> I would look into make sure you're not dealing with any, I know they said thyroid's okay, but I would make sure you're not dealing with Hashimoto's because hair falling out, you can be asymptomatic, which means you don't have any symptoms typically, except maybe something like hair falling out, but yet you're in an autoimmune disease process and don't even know it. Thyroid peroxidase, uh, peroxidase is the test, TPO antibodies, and by looking into that, that can be very helpful for you along the way. So I wouldn't be frustrated. You just need somebody that can get in and dig in with you and come up with a good game plan because with this, it's it has to do with hormones. It's metabolic. And I'll touch on a little bit more when we come out of this commercial break. So hang tight. 888 Lines are open with questions about your health. We're going to tackle some issues dealing with more of metabolic issues, hormone issues, when we come back with Sarah out of this break. Connect with On Call Radio and watch On Call TV at InShapeNetwork.com. Sarah, hair has been falling out. She's frustrated only because it's done tests. Everything seems to be a little okay, but gaining some weight in the midsection, higher cortisol levels, 
you know that's an issue, but yet no one can give you any answers. And so your hair's falling out, but really you want to pull your hair out, but not really, right? Yes, that's what, that exactly what's going on. <laughs> so the reality is your diet plays a role. You know, you've, you've listened to the show long enough, you're going to know I'm going to talk about that. But it really does. I mean, it sets the stage. So, okay, so your cortisol levels are high. Are your stress le- stress levels through the roof? I mean, what 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 in your lifestyle is causing that to happen? Are you not I sleeping a, well? I have a, yeah, I have a job where I work 14 hours a day, and I don't eat completely right. Okay, I got it. So you need a lifestyle overhaul. Yes, sir. Yes. Okay, cool. All right, so I understand that. So first things first, how many days a week do you work? Four or five? Um, five or six. So, and you're exhausted, so it's like when you have that one day off, you don't want to do anything, right? Absolutely. All right. So if I tell you that it'd be good to prepare food that day, the thought of that makes you want to just go lay on the couch and do nothing. Absolutely. Right, but you're sick of feeling the way you feel. <laughs> right. So now if you took an hour on that day instead of laying around and prepared your food for the week, then you would be setting yourself up for success and you wouldn't just be getting into a place where, you know, you just kind of just take life as it comes. Because, I mean, your life is either going to run you or you're going to run your life. So you got to choose. And exercise, 14-hour days, you're like, you are crazy if you think I'm going to carve out time for exercise, Right. Okay, so, mm-hmm. right, that's how you feel, right, exactly. So you work all day long, come home, can't wind down, have a tar- hard time going to sleep, but you got to get up and do it all over again the next day. Mm-hmm. Yeah. I feel like I've worked with people like this before. So the best thing to do it, a lot of times when you have a, a issue, issue with cortisol is you've got you to take control of your life because right now you're in a place where you've got to work because you probably got to pay the bills and everything's running you. And oh, so you're running absolutely. ragged. That's how I feel, absolutely. Yeah, so you got to take control. Okay. Can you reduce your hours? Is that possible or no? Yes. Uh, yes, actually, I can. Mm-hmm. You in sales? I'm just, I'm the giver. I always just try to keep going on, you know. Yeah, but what are you, who are you giving to, family or work or both? Uh, both. <laughs> okay. All right, so... How could you trim a 14-hour day into a nine-hour day? Just let them know that I need to work less. I'm just, I'm the one person that never complains. Who's them? My job. What kind of job? You don't have to say the name. What kind of job? I'm a catering, I'm a catering person at my restaurant. Are you like a manager? No, but I'm a trainer, and they rely on you a lot. Yeah, I, I'm actually, you know, the one person they know will never say no. <laughs> okay, time to set boundaries. Okay, you have to. You're gonna lose yourself. Yeah. You married? Have kids? No, but I hope to be soon. Yeah, well, I do too for you, and so we've got to take care of your health. And you have to do that. No, See, no one else will. You have to set those boundaries. So I would trim that down. What, what, is your, what time do you go into work? Oh, usually 9 a.m. What time do you get home? Um, right now? All changes, but yeah, 11, 12. Yeah, so can you go in earlier, or is that just when everything opens? Um, we usually go in 9 a.m., but if we have orders earlier, I go in, you know, earlier than that yeah i would set a schedule where you're done by six okay done and if you go in at nine then your exercise time has got to be in the morning so you would exercise 30 minutes a day five days a week no matter what it's going to help reset the circadian rhythm it's going to cut down on cortisol it's going to increase your vitality it's going to make you feel better it's going to make you drop belly fat and so the, a couple things, exercise 30 minutes a day, five days a week, start preparing your meals, take it to work with you. So you have snack, three meals a day, a couple of snacks in between. You get a copy of my book, Empowering Your Health. You can follow the diet principles that are in there. It could be a good guide for you. 
uh, green tea as much as possible because green tea will actually lower belly fat. And you just drink regular brewed green tea, not the time of sugar in it you get in a bottle, but the kind you make. So you keep the tea bags with you, hot water at work, drink tea, drink green tea throughout the day. I don't care if it's decaf, it's fine. But whatever, just drink plenty of green tea. That'll help with the cortisol issue. The biggest issue here, though, is you because you don't want to say no. You have to. Or I promise you, not maybe, your body in certain areas will start saying no to you, meaning it will break down and say, I've had enough. And you don't want to have that happen at an early age in your life. You just don't. And you don't have to. But it will happen. And you have to set boundaries and say, you know what? I realize that it may be valuable to the company, but I have to set parameters for my own health. And then start eating well, exercising, and getting to bed probably by at least at least by 11 no matter what you got going on when you got home if you can get to bed by 10 or 11 and you'll get on a new pattern you'll be amazed at what happens with your health get the blood work done get in you know look into all those sorts of things but i think for you my my thought it's more lifestyle related and it's more schedule related than anything else and you just got to buck up and say you know what i have to stand up for myself and my health no one's going to be mad at you I promise you, they're going to be like, wow, okay. She's kind of standing up for herself. And they'll respect it. So you're not going to lose any ground. Puts another hour in the charts. Go tell one person something you learned on this show. And together, we can change the health of our friends, our families, and our communities. This show is designed to provide accurate information of a general nature on the subject matter covered. And given with the understanding that neither the host nor the station is engaged with rendering any form of medical advice, diagnosis, or treatment. This information is not approved by the FDA and is not intended to diagnose, prevent, treat, or cure any disease. To experience more of ASA RX audio, visit us at asarx.com. 